Sometimes it's hard to care about the book of Revelation. I know that. Uh, in fact, sometimes it's hard to care about a scripture altogether. And sometimes you're so low uh, that it's hard to even care about God. Hi, everyone. This is Martin Zender. And as you can see, I'm in my new studio. It's actually the same location. I have not moved. I have just upgraded myself um, and extricated myself as well from the bunker. So we are formerly, formally now, and formerly, I guess, no, presently actually, uh, starting an in-depth, verse-by-verse analysis of the book of the unveiling of Jesus Christ. I spent 65 shows preparing you for this. And for those of you who are coming in new to this, hearing it for the first time, you really do need these 65 shows because they are going to harrow the ground they're going to prepare the ground for you but if you don't want to go back and listen to all those because that's many many hours of listening and viewing pleasure then i will be reminding you of these things as we go because many of the things we touched on in the intro we are going to go over again i'm going to pound it into your skull until you're sick of it until you learn though you're going to learn that you can actually be happy anticipating the judgments which are coming upon uh, the earth my studies once again are based on the book the unveiling of jesus christ you see it on the studio cam the unveiling of jesus christ by mr a e knock uh, now i'm riffing off of this book i'm not taking things literally i am following the order i'm not going to reinvent the wheel this is incredible information it's the best book ever written on it in fact i'm going to write my own version of this book and i'm going to zenderize it and that's what i do here you're going to get points that you're not going to get in the book you're going to get it in an entertaining fashion that you're not going to get in the book a e knock is very smart but uh, dean martin he isn't so we are going to we're going to flesh things out for you. I'm going to give you my personal insights in between the lines here, which are invaluable uh, or should be to you. Now, I like the first line here on page because well, we're already on page 78. This guy spent 78 pages preparing you <laughs> an introduction. I spent 65 shows, almost a show per page. Jesus Christ unveiled, such as the result we may expect from our studies in this scroll. This is going to have a result. I love it. Because so many things in life that we do have really bad results or no results. And there's nothing, nothing more frustrating than working and seeing no result. When God decides to unveil himself, it's going to have a result. And this is what we're seeing in the unveiling of Jesus Christ. The, the fact that he has not been unveiled yet and there's still this horrible evil in the world and that Israel is still stubborn and that you're still stuck in your suit of humiliation, uh, your birthday suit, is, the, is proof that um, we haven't seen the results. I just watched a video I made. Sometimes I watch myself because I feel like I'm in an inspired mode when I, when I teach at a conference and many times um, during my daily walk, I'm not so inspired. And so I go back to the days when I was inspired. I go, who is that guy? I watched a video the other day from uh, Birmingham, Alabama about how we are not recompensed immediately. I can't remember the title of the talk. Um, that it's so frustrating in this life that God stores up our rewards and he stores up a judgment for the wicked. And this causes great unrest both with the righteous and the wicked. The righteous are going, man, we've waited all this time. When's it going to happen? When is our reward coming? When is our, as our body, when are our bodies going to be changed? And the unrighteous go on in their merry way and there doesn't seem to be any uh, retribution. We all want to see retribution, want to see the righteous get what's coming to them, right? But this is going to happen. And the unveiling of Jesus Christ is going to happen. And it's going to happen swiftly. We're going to look at that word this week, finally, right? I told you about that. I've been telling you about it for a long time. I'm so we long for the day I do not only when I get my reward, I just want what's coming to me. Um, but when Jesus Christ gets his reward, he receives his due. And this is going to happen at the unveiling of Jesus Christ. This should please everybody. 
So I don't ever want us to lose sight of the purpose of this prophecy. We're going to see lightning here. You're going to see thunder. You're going to see trumpets and you're going to see bowls. But these themselves are means to an end. And the end is the unveiling of Jesus Christ. That's the title of the book, not the revelation, the unveiling of Jesus Christ. They are going to, listen to this. This is a funny line. How can I, I take it back that A.E. Nock has no sense of humor. Listen to this. Let us not lose ourselves amidst the lightning and the thunder, the trumpets and the bowls. These are nothing in themselves. It is only as they serve to unveil him to our gaze that we are really able to enjoy such tremendous exhibitions of wrath. <laughs> enjoy such tremendous exhibitions of wrath, like a third of humanity being killed. Oh, honey, turn on the television. I think a, a third of humanity are going to be killed. Uh, could you put extra butter on the popcorn? But only as we see Christ unveiled. This reminds me, speaking of Birmingham, when I was at there for the conference, there was a tornado coming through. I videotaped part of this tornado. I was so close to being in this thing. It destroyed the road I was on. And I was outside in it because I've never seen a tornado. And I've always wanted to see one. Um, if it has to sweep me away, so be it. I want to see a freaking tornado. So this tornado was heading toward um, Bessemer, Alabama, and I didn't realize that this was a tornado zone because I'm not too bright when it comes to meteorological warnings, but I just wanted to see this darn thing. And the prelude to this thing, the thunder and the lightning, was so awe-inspiring to me. Um, I, I loved it. I was, I was mesmerized. I stared at it. And it, my heart beat because of the fury of the it was F2 tornado coming into town, coming down the road I'm on, taking the roofs off of houses mere uh, uh, yards away. A tree fell, missed my car by a foot. And I went in the house, stupid me, five seconds before it started. Everything, it's, everything started to get quiet. It was night, about 10 at night, and it started to like, there's a little lull. I thought, ah, storm's over. I went inside and boom, 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 house started shaking. What did I miss? Jeez. The, the the family's in the hallway under a mattress. I'm out there going, oh, can't wait to see this thing. The hell with the mattresses. I want to see it. And this is the what A.E. Nock is talking about. We're seeing the power of God unveiled. You have to remember all through this that God is good. God's wrath leads to blessing, and it does it every time. Here's an example in Paul. Now, it's rare that we're going to compare the book of Revelation to Paul because Paul is all about peace, grace, um, and we know those in the body of Christ will be rescued out of the coming indignation. We are not going to go through the tribulation because we are in the body of Christ and we're rescued out of the wrath of God because we're part of a different administration. God is now conciliated to the world through his son. Different eras, different things for different eras. Going to go to Galatians 1.12. Let's start with verse 10. For at present, am I persuading humans or am I persuading God? Or am I seeking to please humans? If I'm still pleasing humans, I were not a slave of Christ. For I am making known to you, brethren, as to the evangel which is being brought by me, that it is not in accord with humanity. For neither did I accept it from humanity, nor was I taught it, but it came through a revelation of Jesus Christ, a revealing, a revelation. Paul's gospel came through a revelation. The heavens opened and separated, and Jesus Christ was revealed to the apostle Paul. The same word, revelation, unveiling, same type of thing happening here in the unveiling of Jesus Christ as happened with Paul on the road to Damascus. But I want you to see what immediately happened to Paul. What are the immediate effects? We're talking about effects here. What are the immediate effects of the unveiling of Jesus Christ, the revelation of the Son to Paul? Um, well, the first thing that happened was the men who were with Paul were stricken to the ground. Much as when our Lord uh, stood up and in the Garden of Gethsemane, when the soldiers were looking for him, he said, Who do you seek? We seek uh, Jesus Christ. I am he. They fell backwards at his unveiling. He just said his name, and they fell backwards. That's the principle we're looking at. The unveiling of Jesus Christ, the world is going to fall backwards. That little incident in the Garden of Gethsemane was a prototype. It was a a precursor of what is going to happen on a major scale in the unveiling of Jesus Christ. He's going to say his name. Boom, 
with thunder, lightning, and people are going to fall down and go boom. They're going to fall down and go boom. But the boom has a purpose. We know that it's not the end. It's a means to an end. So look what happened to Paul. The men that were with him fell down, and Paul himself was blinded by the brightness of, of, of the light. It's, it's, uh, dis it's kind of destructive. Can, am I allowed to say that? Yeah, Jesus Christ revealing himself to Paul is kind of destructive at, at first. Uh, but what followed was transcendent blessing. I mean, crazy blessing. But the immediate effects, again, you could almost say were a tragedy. Ah, oh, the trip was ruined. The trip to Damascus was so carefully planned, and now it's ruined. And now Paul's blind. His corneas don't work. His pupils don't work. This is terrible. He's got to go to an optometrist as soon as he gets to Damascus. It's a tragedy, I tell you, a tragedy. Uh, but... It's only the prelude. It's only phase one to a revelation of truth. But God has to arrest his messenger. So God is arresting the earth because he's going to transform the earth. It's a prelude. It's all a prelude. With Paul, it was a prelude to a dis dispensing of this evangel of God's grace that we have. And in the unveiling, it is a prelude to the earth finally being delivered over into the hands of an able administrator, namely the Lord Jesus Christ.